How many of you still, still remember? God took a river. Huh? And he planted it inside of the garden of Eden. Bam! The thing began to flow. Just like you would take, transplant a tender maize plant. You transplant it for one and you put it somewhere else and it begins to grow. God, he was not a maize plant, he transplanted. It's a river. He plucked it from heaven and he planted it in Eden. Are you still with me? God intended that heaven and earth will be self-sustaining, self-supporting, self-propagating, self-rejuvenating. The original design did not allow any realm to depend on any, any realm. It was in the day of Noah that rain fell first. Think of, you are not you are not thinking. Think about it. In Noah's generation, that we had the first rainfall. The reason why there was a need for rain was because of a fracture that took place in it. You wouldn't have known rain. No, because the arrangement for watering the earth. The Bible says there was a mist that went out of the ground and watered. The whole face of the earth because the earth was supposed to be self supporting, self sustaining. Heaven did not need to bring intervention to it. So God plucked a river from heaven and planted it in Eden. When that river began to flow, when it came out of Eden, it branched into four heads. Pishon, Gishon, Hedekel, and Euphrates. If you go to the book of Revelation, you only see Euphrates. You will not see Pishon, you will not see Gishon, you will not see Hedekel. One of the indicators to check for the end of time, hmm, to know whether this world is coming to an end, Euphrates will be dried up. Euphrates is one of the witnesses that was in the first settlement of humankind and towards the end of time there will be a sign that will come through it but i'm not going there yet. are you there? okay do you realize that it was these rivers that revealed the mineral deposits in the territories that they encompassed are you there for instance Pishon, it encompasses it. It encompasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. As it flows by, it begins to erode the ground, and then it reveals the mineral resources. When Adam failed, God took this river, this same river. You know, where's the source? Heaven. Then he plucked it, put it in Eden. When Adam failed, he now removed it from there. And then when somebody becomes born again, have you heard what John chapter 7 says? He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly. Now, the original purpose of this river is to reveal treasure, not for drinking. <laughs> it means when you begin to generate that river, the treasures that God has hidden inside of you. Should I tell you something? The resources you need to prosecute life, God hid it inside of your regenerated spirit but the river we need to erode it to open the treasure the first time i went to the united states we moved to Chi chicago so we said let's hold a meeting for one day they don't know us in america so let's hold a meeting for one day 
and greet people. When we got there, the whole place was filled up. And it's not like Ghana, where we can change, miraculously change a 300 seater auditorium to 750 seater. We can by miracles. <laughs> There, one five is one five. So we got a one five hall just to greet, and it was filled to the brim. So we're driving to the place. I was looking for a message to preach. Lord, what are you saying? It was in that vehicle. Where did it come from? When I preached it, how many hours did it take? It took like three hours. And by the time I finished preaching the message, I was high in spirit. And we decided to pray for the sick and strange miracles took place. All of those resources came from a man's spirit. We are going for the second trip now. The hall we booked that we thought is big, that is filled up. We booked 3,500. We said, ah, this one is big, this one is big. It's filled up. And the resources that we are going to dispense, where would they come from? Do you realize that you are a bag of resources? And if only you can provoke the river through speaking in tongues consistently, some, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, resources will come out. And those resources will, will sponsor your life. Those, he plucked the river from Eden and he put it inside of I was just sitting there. Pastor was praying. That river. I saw something through it. The resources. If you allow the river flow, it will be eroding it. Very soon, you will see what is there. Very soon, you will see what is there. In the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. The Lord God took a man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The first thing that the voice of God will do for you is that it will reveal your essence. The fact that you can work in a bank and prosper and grow to become the group managing director does not mean that is your essence. We we'll need to separate between your job and your work. Your job pays you salaries. Your work pays you rewards. Which one are you doing? If you are wise and you have a job like I did, I was using my job to fund my work because my work is my essence. My work is the reason why God can afford to spend resources to make me have oxygen to breathe. A friend of mine had a child in the, what they call that place, that intensive care unit, ICU. And the situation was so bad that they had to put the child on oxygen. That was when we discovered the, how much oxygen costs for one hour. So we could calculate how much oxygen, the cost of the oxygen we are breathing now for one year. It's a lot of money. And God is spending that money to keep you alive. You know why he's keeping you alive? Because he believes, he has hope that you will stumble upon the garden, the purpose, and understand what you were supposed to keep and what you were supposed to dress. You were supposed to keep something. You were supposed to dress something. So early enough, I knew that the major, the core of my purpose was to teach the kingdom of God. Right? 
I used 15 years to study the Bible. I refused to earn a master's degree and a doctorate degree so that I would earn it in the Bible because that's my essence. My colleagues were rushing to get master's PhD. Those were easy things I could do. I still remember, I still remember, maybe no, maybe no longer now, but when I was in the university, I was brainy, I was sharp. I don't know if I'm still sharp now, but that time, <laughs> that time. So there was no, the only reason why I did not read medicine was because I couldn't see blood. Like, why would I be walking with? No. We were sent to deliver people, let them not be spilling blood. How will I be walking where there's blood everywhere? It's not, it won't work. It won't work. So that's the only reason why I didn't read. Not because I did not have the mental capacity to do that. I don't know if I'm still intelligent, but I used to be. And it was enough for me to have earned a PhD. But when I found my essence, I knew it was in scriptures. I gave 15 years to it first. I wanted to know what it was about. Are you there? That was this not revelational study, the mental study first. And then when I started knowing the Holy Spirit, he started connecting it. He connected it enough for me to be able to teach it, to instruct it. Because my essence is along that line. So the 15 year sacrifice could be justified. You were supposed to dress a garden and to keep it. And it's only the voice of God that will direct you to what garden God is willing to spend the resources to make oxygen available for you to tend. Is that correct? So you'll never know purpose if you don't hear the voice of God. For some of you women here, your assignment because I've met women like that, is to pray for your husband. I met a woman, she knows assignment very well. It's just to pray for her husband. Her husband is very stubborn, but she ha he has an intercessor. And because of that, he, he is a wise man. Not because he's wise in himself. There's they, somebody ministering to him. And the woman is convinced that her duty is this one. That when she's going to stand before God, she will not present the whole world, but this one. A very stubborn man he used prayer to tame him he came back to his senses prayer you are there may the lord open your eyes to know the garden that he wants you to tend that's right number two if you don't know these three things it means you absconded from school just like adam did if i if i have time to take you to the book of exodus i would have shown you the primary school education because that was how God began to appear to Moses for the purpose of education the, his relationship with Mo, Moses I, I can show you from scripture I can show you the texture of that relationship is educational next one second thing the Lord commanded I'm interested with the word command i know you know the command but i just want to draw your attention to command because commandment is not in view except government is in view the second thing the voice of god will do is to establish government it is possible for you do you realize that How powerful a man that has money is. All right, let's do some calculations. In the year 2000, what was the exchange rate from CD to Naira? Somebody take us back the financial lane. Let's calculate something. Exchange rate from CD to Naira in 2000, what was it? Odame, you used to trans transact globally. Give us a figure. We need a figure to work with. Are you helping me? Brother, you were talking. I thought you were calculating. Now, okay, give me a figure. It may not be accurate. Just give me a figure so that we can work with something. Yes? 
Hmm? One naira was two, uh, two, uh, 2020. Any idea? One uh, convert it, give me one naira equals what? Okay, now um, calculate what 15 million naira will be in Ghana cities based on that your exchange rate. What 15 million naira will be? That was the that was the amount they gave me for house rent annually. Four million Ghana cities asset 2020. So I get that amount every year for my house rent. Meanwhile, my monthly salary can pay my house rent for the whole year. It can pay half of my monthly salary can pay my house rent for the whole year. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm not advertising myself. See, just listen to me. A man that has resources at his disposal is a deadly man. If God is not his king, imagine how much money he has to play around with women. I was going with my colleague for work. We entered an office. The lady that was casting news on television, he told me, ah, that's, that's his former girlfriend. Meanwhile, we came into the office randomly. It's not as if we did not choose the time to come. We just came, but the, his, his girlfriend was up. Was up. We entered one office. Hey, he hugged one girl there because he said, okay, this one. When, this, um, I, I know this one. By the time we finished from that office, he had hooked up. He had reconnected with five ladies that he had known before. Why was it so he had the resources to do that? If God wants to give you resources, what he does is that he puts you under commandment. That's the only way he can manage a strong man. Oh, most of you don't know how powerful the resource of anointing is. It's more powerful than money. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. If you are not under commandment, that resources, the resources at your disposal, Will, will, you will injure so many destinies. So when God wants to help a man that he wants to commit something to, he puts him under government. Before God puts authority on your tongue, he will take you through training such that you cannot cause anybody. If you find people that cause people on the streets in the market, there's nothing on their tongue. They are just listening. The real people that have the power that can destroy, before he gives you, he puts you under government. When you see a man operating as if he's master, he 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 left, he absconded from class. Because the idea of man is a creature. That represents God, so you cannot be master. No, the arrangement for man doesn't accommodate the place of mastery. Are you there? Do you know? I started having international invitations 2012. I had the few invitations, and I went to Jesus. I said, Jesus. I didn't even ask him, are you the one that opened the door? I said, Jesus, thank you for opening the doors. And then he now told me, I'm not responsible for any of those doors. So that was how, how I did not honor those invitations. I, start, I was on satellite in 2011, satellite television, 2011. I started having invitations, 2012, 13. When they knew that I wasn't coming, the thing started dropping. Then one of those years, I don't, I've forgotten the year. I got one invitation. When I saw it, I laughed because of the nation. So, <coughs> this? Then Jesus came again and said, I'm sending you there. <laughs> Is that the place? I'm sending you there. That was the first time in my life 
I saw cripples rise in an open meeting. Five, five of them began to walk. In fact, when I, when I, I, I greeted them, I was greeting them on the pulpit. They just brought one boy with twisted legs and kept him here, so that if I claim that I didn't, I won't claim that I didn't see him. So when they dropped the boy there, my preaching, my pulpit became here. We were, I was no longer visiting the, the other side. Do you know that when I was preaching? The guy began to shake like this on the ground. So I went there to investigate what was what was going on. He was shaking. Then after a while, I noticed the boy stood up. He stood up like this, but he couldn't walk. So and the normal thing to do was to command him to walk, but they, they, there was no courage to accomplish it. Please understand that that's the first time. That's the first time. No courage at all because I was wondering. I said, Okay, what if I talk now? What if he, he now falls down? That <laughs> it was my interpreter that now came to me. I, I, was, I was observing the ball. My interpreter now came from the back and he may, probably wanted to tell me that. Can you see the miracle? So he touched me. It was when he touched me at the back that walk now came out of that walk. I assure you, was not my doing at all. <laughs> this boy began to walk. I'm telling you now, I know nothing about the boy's work. The mother now began to cry. When other people that were crippled saw him, they threw their crutches away and started walking. So, the people were now saying, I was a big preacher from Nigeria. In fact, they had to, to whisk me away from the pulpit that night to avoid stampede. I went to my room and said, what is happening? You know what, what is happening? The Lord sent me. That's what is happening. <laughs> when the Lord sends you, even though you are not a powerful man, you will now accomplish powerful things. Yeah. People that gave their life to Christ, I took them to the, the river for baptism. So they sang a song in their language and it was so sweet. Even though I, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but it was sweet in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Bethesda, Bethesda. Then I remembered that place in scripture in the book of John chapter 5. Where an angel came and stirred the water. And anyone that entered first was healed. Ah, I entered inside the water. I, I'm the angel now. You know, after what happened, faith, the faith has, has gone on. <laughs> I entered inside the water and I said, people that are sick, do you know, this is life, this is real. We started that baptism 12 noon. We finished by 4 p.m. People that were sick were getting here, just entering that water. I said, what's happening? There's an unbeliever. He's, he's an academic, so he doesn't believe all this miracle. When I landed from the plane, we came to his house. He came with a medical report and uh, an x-ray that some muscles here, were, they were torn. I saw it in the x-ray. I laid my hands there, prayed for him. Then we went for the crusade for seven days. By the time we got back, because... He wanted to prove that I was a fake preacher. He went back for another x-ray and discovered that he couldn't see the torn muscles there again. So he kept it and waited for me. When we came back from the field, we branched at his house. He went inside and brought He said, now he believes the God that we came to preach. My driver now told me that his in-laws house is close to this place. Can he just pass there? Let me bless them. I said, why not? We got to the in-laws house. His father-in-law, deaf in one ear since when he was nine, and then the other ear, 
could only hear slightly. So when I greeted him, he did not hear. He said, no, it's not as if he's not a good man, he can't hear. I just, I put my hand in his ear. I said, Jesus can open this ear. Before I prayed, the man started hearing. The, the ear that was deaf could hear better than the real one. The man now began to dance without music. I noticed his wife was sitting down. She was excited, but she was sitting down. I was expecting her to stand. She had a stroke. Prayed for her. The woman stood up and began to. You know, at this time, the faith, the faith was. She began to work. Their first son came from that door and said in his heart, hey, this false prophet said, okay. as he said that, I heard it as if a human being spoke to me. I went to him and said, Am I the one you are calling a false prophet? He was so amazed that he he fell down. So that's how I left them on my way to the airport. When we got to the airport, I noticed the driver was crying. So the military people that were supposed to, the security people now, they arrested me. That I made their citizens. He now came and explained to them. The Air Force, the, the military people needed prayer. Now, that was my first mission outside of my country. Me too. I, I was crying. But God commanded me to go. If I take you to the book of Acts of the Apostles, I will show you how that Jesus gave his apostles commandments. When God chooses you, one of the ways we know is that he will give you commandments. The commandments are supposed to restrain you so that you can manage the powers he makes available to you. Our generation is sick. They need men that can help. And then you carry the power of Jesus. Like a man I met in Vienna. He had long beard like this. He was as tall as this, yes, like this. With broad chest, you would think he came to fight. But as I was preaching, he began to cry. He wept throughout. The next day I came, preached, he was crying. The third day I came, I now called him and said, Why are you crying? He started telling me all the sins he's committed. I didn't preach about salvation, I was just preaching, just teaching. Prayed for him pleaded with Jesus on his behalf and Jesus gave him great the peace of the forgiveness of sins. That guy became an evangelist. The world needs men that can bring the abilities of God. And before God makes you powerful, he will bridle you with his commandments so that the anointing he gives you will not become the reason why you will derail. You know, Apostle Paul said, I beat my body. I put it in subjection. So that when I preach to others, I myself will be restrained enough not to become a castaway. So if God likes you, what he does to you is that he bridles you with, with command. That's the second experience he gave to us. Number three. Then I ran up. Next verse. This is the canal. He's teaching him how to exercise the power of choice. Because if you cannot exercise the power of choice with guidance, you will die. In this ecosystem that God built, there was no debt in it. No debt. In fact, Jewish scholars believe, not, not Bible now, I'm talking about Jewish scholars, okay? Jewish scholars believe that Adam lived in harmony in this environment for seven years before he fell. So in those seven years, for instance, there was no sickness, there was no death, no affliction, no snake bite. Think about it. It says, what will open the gates of death 
is the use of your power of choice. I will end with a story. Sorry, we could not, no time to enter the Genesis chapter 3 for, for us to look at the education that Satan brought to Adam. If we had done that, I would have shown you the difference between the voice of God, the voice of Satan, and the voice of man. And then we look at your life, we can tell who you heard. Whether you heard Satan, whether you heard God, or whether you heard man. There was this preacher. He spends his weekends on the mountain. So he takes care of the family, puts everybody on that, then he'll climb with his lamb on Friday. Dry fasting. He will come back Sunday, 5 a.m. to take his bath and put on his suit. He became so powerful in the area of raising the dead. He, he, he was a, an authority in raising the dead. He maintained that discipline for a long time. He became very powerful. Let him not speak because if he, if he does, it will happen. If he releases a curse on you, it will, it, will, it will rest. He had authority. He could summon spirits that had departed from bodies back from Hades. At the time of this story, the person that told me this story, he went to pray for him because he was on a wheelchair. How did he get to a, to a wheelchair? He started sleeping with people's wives. So the gate of death was open. If you are not schooled on how to use the power of choice, it will come into head-on collision with death. He made choices. Those choices overwhelmed his defenses in the spirit. Those choices made him a target and made him accessible. Those choices made him vulnerable to stroke. And the reason why it was stroke was even mercy. So that he would have time to repent. I hope you know, Satan will not wish stroke for him. Like some of you that got, you were involved in an accident and you came out. Like me. How many of you? Have, aha. Do you realize that it was not the vehicle Satan was attacking? It wasn't stroke that Satan planned, but it was stroke that came on him so that he would have time to repent. The preacher that went to minister to him was the one telling me this story. Prayed for him. He even stood up and began to walk from the wheelchair. But as the preacher was leaving, God told him, yes, I answered your prayer, so you know I'm with you. But that man, he has died. Three days later. And that death was not by ordination. That death was by a choice. Every man must be trained to handle choice. And if you have not gotten these three lessons that God gave Adam, it means you have sconded from class. And when we look around the body of Christ today, it is obvious many have absconded. So the demand for the deliverance ministry is on is on is <laughs> we need to be casting debt away every Sunday because some people would have made choices that would have brought debt close to their current. God wants to raise a generation that will serve his will so that his glory can be restored to the nations. That's why he kept us. And indeed we will serve him. In the name of Jesus. Amen.